Hello everyone, welcome to Jessica Academy. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a fancy corporate material with flakes and other stuffs uh, using llama materials in Random Man for Maya. So yeah, let's get started. So I have a simple scene here. I have a simple corp material that I have uh, imported from the content browser and uh, I have a simple light. It's a Pixar dome light with a HDRI attached to it. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's assign the llama surface first and yeah so let's create a llama diffuse and that's going to be our base material and we're going to add a specular layer on top of it so in order to add a specular layer i need a llama layer and llama dielectric so yeah and now i'm going to connect the out color to the out color of our llama lay, uh, layer to our material front of the llama surface and connect the llama diffuse into the material base and this okay so it directly connects i guess yeah so it works cool so we have our setup ready let's start the ipr Cool. So we have our diffuse layer and we have our dielectric layer, which is a specular layer. So usually in core paint, we have uh, two different specular going on. The first one will be the metallic rough specular. And on top of that, we will have some clear coat layer, like a varnish kind of a specular. So yeah, uh, let's, let's uh, give some color to our diffuse layer first. Yeah, maybe we can go something like this and maybe Let's increase the saturation and the brightness. And yeah, when it comes to uh, a metallic kind of uh, surface, so we don't want that much of diffuse contribution. Uh, so let's keep this uh, a dark color like this and in Llama Dielectric. So I want this layer to be uh, pretty rougher and uh, uh, want this to be looking like a metallic, but I don't want the white specular here maybe yeah, I need to choose the color that I've selected in the Llama Diffuse. And let's increase the brightness of this color. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's increase the roughness even further, like this. And maybe let's go for 0 0.35 to get some brighter uh, spec here so yeah I think this is fine so uh, maybe let's try some let's try to increase some of the uh, diffuse contribution here so so that we won't get so much of metallic going on here yeah I think this will work yeah, now this is the time to add the clear coat layer. Let's add another llama layer and llama dielectric. Connect the llama layers, layer one's out color to the material base and llama dielectric's out color to llama layer two. So, uh, yeah, let's connect this here cool so now we have uh, our carpet material is there but I want to add some more uh, fancy stuff so I just want to add some frontal based on color so usually we use some uh, sampler info or frontal kind of stuff but when you're using llama materials llama layer so especially on the clear coat so uh, you don't have to go for frontal informations at all so in the previous tutorial i explained like when you're using the llama dielectric so uh, you can actually uh, work with the interior colors so like absorption colors so i'm just going to enable the opacity to show you what's going on here so yeah 
I'm just going to assign an absorption color. Maybe we can go for a red color and uh, change the absorption radius. Okay, we need to enable the interior. Yeah, so you can see now our clear coat. I mean, basically this is the clear coat layer in this setup, but when you directly connect this to the Lama surface, it works as a glass material. So yeah, we have uh, a tinted glass, but let's see if I connect the same input to the Lama layer as a specular and let's connect this here. And uh, at this moment, nothing much happened here, but when I change the top thickness of the Lama layer too that we have connected our clear coat layer. So as I change the thickness here, you can see uh, all of a sudden our clear coat la layer turned into red. So I don't want this much of absorption radius. So as I reduce the absorption radius, you can see uh, the inner layer is now uh, started to appear. So so we have two different controls one is the absorption radius and the other one is the top thickness so you have to play with both uh, the settings to get the result that we want so yeah i think we can change the increase the brightness of it yeah it is there already so maybe we can add some diffuse contribution. Okay, so let's try playing with some absorption radius. Go for 1.2 or 5. Yeah, maybe Let's increase the reflectivity a little bit. I don't want the color to be a reddish or orangish yellow, so. Yeah. So now we can see, uh, so this is the result that I want. You can see, clearly see the color is uh, slowly turning into red as the angle of the surface is changed uh, so yeah so this is the look that I want and yeah so maybe we can increase the absorption radius a little bit cool so yeah let's uh, start working on the flakes so actually uh, when it comes to flake on a carpet material, so basically the clear coat layer will be the shiny one, so it doesn't have any that much of a breakups. So, uh, so okay, so we need to reduce the specular roughness so that we will get some sharper reflections here. And so usually the flakes layer will be uh, taking place in the rougher metallic specular. So I'm just going to create a flakes, PXR flakes. It is very straightforward. So all you have to do is create this node and connect the result N to the normal of the dielectric that, I mean, uh, the, the rough uh, metallic specular that we have already created. So I'm just going to render with a cropped region to see What's going on with the flakes? Yeah, so first let's see how the flakes are working. So if you want, we can see uh, a solo this. And uh, so the first thing I usually uh, do is I'll reduce the flakes frequency to like very small values like one two three or something like that so you can see we have the flakes uh, are there and it's just working fine so now maybe we can turn off the solo to see uh, on top of the material so yeah the flakes are generally working fine and uh, so we have so many settings here so if you want you can just play with this like 
we have the flex randomness and uh, I usually turn on the flex randomness I mean increase the value of flex randomness uh, so that uh, the flex will be stand out so it will be very prominent and we have the jitter as well so if you want even more prominent you can play with these values and finally we have the flex size if you want the flex size to be very small so uh, you can use this and we have the flick density so I think this density is fine so it will work just fine uh, yeah so once once I'm happy with the result so I'll usually slowly bump up the value of uh, flick frequency so yeah I think we can increase to 20. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy with the flakes here at least for the sake of this tutorial so at uh, this scale it's pretty uh, uh, dominant I mean prominently looking so yeah I think yeah so let's turn off the crop region and let's have a full render and see how it looks so I'm just going to pass the record for a minute so I'll, I'll resume it once the render is done so yeah here is the finished render so yeah so I'm, I'm really happy with the result here and yeah that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching